<clears throat> Einstein, Einstein debates uh, relativity at Bad Nauheim in 1920. Einstein did debate with people who were opposed to relativity theories at Bad Nauheim in 1920. Unfortunately, it degenerated into Nazi racist attacks against Einstein. And Einstein did not seem did not want did not seem to want that sort of debate again. That leaves us with the problem that there was never a proper debate with Einstein from those criticising his relativity and thus never any resolution to clarify what he meant. So it seems to be what we really needed was uh, Einstein to clarify a lot of the issues he was dealing with and he never really seemed to give that sort of debate. What all we seem to have is this farce of a debate at Bad Nolheim in 1920 and just trying to stick to the relativity issues uh, uh, fell apart in 1920. So Einstein says a lot of things and it's uh, not really clear what, what he means most of the time. And if he was able to explain himself he would have uh, we would have more chance to uh, say what his theory is really about because if I go back uh, previous oh, so go back to go back to the beginning uh, to this this little one out uh, it's not it evades and as to, to what Einstein's relativity is and so there's things which Einstein said and which uh, people subsequently to him have tried to make out make sense of what he's talking about and it's uh, things have been left into a state of confusion if he was, a, if he was able to have done a debate with people to his ideas, at least we would have got, got some idea of uh, what he was trying to convey in his theories. But that never that never seemed to happen because of this farce that happened at Bad Nauheim in 1920. It kind of put a block on any other debate like this. So, what I'm going to refer to is a paper by Joran van Dogen and it's called Reactionaries and Einstein's Fame German Scientists for the Preservation of Pure Science uh, Relativity and the Bad Norheim Meeting it's at that link and I'm also referring to a TV programme Dark Matters which is, uh, does a representation of it so first of all I want to show you the wiki uh, article on Philip Leonard, and he seems to be the ma main opponent to Einstein in 1920. This is what Wikipedia's got on him. It's a picture of him here, and it's uh, Philip Le Edward Anton von Leonard. I was a German physicist and the winner of the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1905 for research on cathode rays and the discovery of many of their properties. He was a na nationalist and anti-Semite and as an active proponent of the Nazi ideology he had supported Adolf Hitler in the 1920s and was an important role model for the Deutsch physics movement during the Nazi period. So this is what's unfortunately happened. Einstein got into a debate with this person and it was about anti-semitism and Nazi ideology and so it was a quite horrible debate. It was so horrible experience for Einstein he didn't want to be involved in anything else like that again. So if we 
go to the this is the representation of it uh, this is in the program dark matter and it's a representation of what Einstein has just become famous in 1919 uh, with his theories so so being supported by uh, Eddington astronomical observations and in the papers they're talking about uh, Newtonian physics being overturned and replaced by Einstein's physics. So we're going to pick that up now. And so this is supposed to be Leonard and he's picking up on the thing that Newtonian physics is supposed to be overturned now by Einstein. And this is what's getting reported in newspapers and so forth, and it's upset. So, Leonard, he was a top scientist of the day, as I pointed out to you, and he was a Nobel Prize winner, and he's looking at Einstein getting publicity for having a, a overturned Newtonian physics, and he's, he's not happy about that. He's looking at what Einstein's theory is supposed to be about and thinking it's nonsense. So, this is... Uh, Mikio Kaku is a sort of fan of Einstein and he's going to say things from a pro Einstein point of view. So we just pick up what he's going to say. So, Leonard is seeing himself as the top man in physics, and suddenly his upstart Einstein's coming along and overturning everything in theoretical physics, and Leonard doesn't like it. So, picking up that now. Not in the tradition of German physics, you know, Einstein's overturning the type of physics that Leonard is working upon. Okay. Defend his career and the physical world as he knows it. He's heading for a confrontation with Einstein that will change history. I shall this. I shall And so this is now the representation of the meeting at Bad Neuheim where Leonard is going to debate with Einstein and Einstein is going to try to defend uh, relativity, his relativity theories and uh, Leonard is going to criticise it. So here we go. Bad Nauheim, Germany, 1920. It's going to be a debate. Leonard there criticising relativity. And this is supposed to be an act, Einstein, an actor portraying Einstein. And so here we go. Albert Einstein faces his most potent opponent, Philip Leonard, in a public debate. More than 200 years of Newtonian physics. I don't know how accurate any of this is, is they start off by shaking hands. <clears throat> And that sort of criticism from opponents of Einstein's relativity has still been ongoing. Just 
just bringing up the criticism that it's only just thought experiments and just playing around with the maths. So he's, he's saying it's clever, but it's not physics. It's um, I'm, it's unfortunate. I don't really know what the debate was like, and so I don't know how accurate this representation is. So this is another fan of Einstein. So here now to give the. Einstein perspective on it and of course from the Einstein's perspective if you're a fan of Einstein well the physics that people like Leonard was working on was now being overturned by Einstein and Leonard didn't want his physics overturned so we'll pick it up So that's a difference. Leonard is an experimental physicist and Einstein is coming up with these thought experiments. He's not actually doing any experimental physics. He's just thinking through things and coming up with theorising. And according to the tradition which we got for German physics at that time, experimental physics is the important thing. Doing experiments is important. Theorising what this person is doing is not so important and so uh, Leonard is criticising this sudden change in theory it's not as far as uh, Leonard is concerned it's this this has not got any experimental support for it if you thought what the papers were advertising was that Eddington had made an observation of uh, starlight bending and that was so say proving Einstein's theory but that is really just very thim thimsy evidence just one or two or three observations of starlight bending that's very thimsy compared to the numerous experiments that people like this have done using Newtonian physics you just don't overturn on just one or two observations like that so say from uh, his friend Eddington so he's criticising that there's no experimental uh, support for what's going on here with this theorising this really riled Leonard he thought Einstein's theories were just airy fairy sort of whims of the imagination yeah airy fairy whims whim of the imagination uh, this is what Leonard's thinking Einstein's theorising is just airy fairy thin for airy fairy stuff without strong experimental support like what he's doing for physics. So, as far as Leonard concerned, what this person is doing, Einstein, is not really physics. Now, Leonard's going to talk about a thought experiment. Einstein's approaching physics from thought experiments and Leonard is coming down to Einstein's level and dealing with thought experiments as well. So he wants common sense with it as well. And it's one of the problems we criticise Einstein uh, theory about theories and it doesn't seem to make sense what Einstein's talking about. So we go back to my videos go back to um, so I'm getting too many of them now uh, next one two I think I think I think that one is it yeah so this is the one, one of the big ones, uh, paper by 
G Burst and Brown is pointing out what Einstein seems to be doing is a cuckoo process. Whatever Einstein is doing in his papers, when he's doing his thought talking about his thought experience and so forth, it doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. And the way that the people who support Einstein come come back on that issue is worth well, physics doesn't need to have to make sense. You go, what? What's the point of doing something that doesn't make sense? And so it's a very th flimsy de defence which they got. If you just look through the papers, it doesn't make sense. And so Leonard is here advocating it doesn't that you should use common sense. You should be making make having physics which makes sense, and that's one of the one of the criticisms, and well, it's another criticisms that many of us opposed to Einstein have. Einstein just doesn't make sense. Uh, here we go back to the beginning of it again. Get it, pick it up. That didn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. This is the actor portraying Einstein here, and this is an actor portraying Leonard here. Leonard's uh, criticised one of Einstein's thought experiments, and Einstein has replied to that criticism, and the criticism doesn't seem to make any sense. So I, th I want to look at this uh, thought experiment thing again. That is supposed to be um, Einstein's relativity. That uh, when you're dealing with special relativity, you, you uh, uh, it's you just consider constant uh, velocity motion. And when you go to general relativity, it's not quite clear what you're doing extra, but you seem to be incorporating extra things like acceleration and gravity. That sort of people sort of argue as to what is the relationship between general relativity and special relativity but trying to stick it to special relativity uh, if you're on a train and the train is moving then that sort of is moving with respect to the platform outside and so it's possible then to think uh, the other way around that from your frame of reference on the train uh, it's you that is stationary and it's the platform that's moving and that, that's supposed to be part of this thought experiment of Einstein the uh, motion is relative and that is what uh, Leonard here is criticising and so Leonard's criticising that by saying there is a difference between those two things if you are 
on the train and the train suddenly stops it's a, in a collision or a crash then you feel that but people outside standing on the platform or standing on the earth are not going to experience that so there is a difference between uh, you moving with respect to the platform and the platform moving with respect to you so he's criticizing that part of relativity and of course it is pretty unclear uh, from Einstein's theorizing in his thought thought experiments what does Einstein really mean when he's talking about motion being relative and so it needs clarification but it, I don't see that Einstein is clarifying this situation here when, when Einstein replies to this, this is supposed to be a representation of Einstein, it, it does not seem to make much sense to me. It's true that it seems arbitrary. What what's that supposed to mean? So, from his theorising, you've got from the frame of reference on the train that you are stationary on that train and the platform is moving away from you. But say from the uh, platform from the old rest frame there, it's the train that's moving. So, what's sort of arbitrary? What? A limited few, something I should have the sound up a bit more. Limited few, sound up, try it again. But only if you look upon a limited view of the world. Only if you look upon a limited view of the world. So, how does that answer the criticism? I don't, it doesn't seem to answer the criticism, but everybody's being portrayed here as getting up and clapping. Einstein, you're clever, and they're clapping. And Leonard's looking all mystified, so say mystified. Einstein, he's looking, well, Einstein's given an explanation, and it doesn't seem to make sense. Einstein's standing there saying, he's thinking to himself, he's says something that makes sense. And you go, What's what is going on? This is why it would be good to have a proper debate. This this debate just degenerates into a farce, but it's not doesn't really make sense. What did Einstein mean? What is he talking about? He's referred to one of Einstein's thought experiments, and Einstein's response doesn't seem to make any sense. But everybody's clapping, and of course, I don't really really know what happened at this conference and this is a representation of it and so it's not really that clear whether this really happened. Leonard claims to be speaking up for common sense but experiments increasingly support Einstein. So Leonard is speaking up for common sense but the narrator is saying experiments are, are increasingly conforming confirming Einstein is a and it's sort of like not really sort of we've criticized Einstein have uh, looked into the experiments that's supposed to uh, support Einstein and what we find is there's no support really for Einstein and it's all based upon a, a lie basically this the experimental evidence upon which Einstein is supposed to be built is just turns out to be a lie not really there. That's gone on for there. So it's wrong. The universe really is that bizarre. So he's saying the universe really is that bizarre, but no, we don't. We dissidents, we don't accept the experiments which so say are confirming this point of view. And when when you look into the maths, the maths doesn't really make any sense. So. 
the maths don't make any sense, then no experiments could confirm it. He says they sound crazy, and that's the point of it. When we've looked into it, it doesn't make any sense. If I go back to game, that's the that's the lie on the side of the experiment. And uh, if I go back to the next one, two. When you sort of try to make sense of the maths, the math that oh, Einstein writes it's nonsense, it comes out as nonsense. So he's crazy, crazy out, crazy. Says it's crazy, yep, it's crazy. No, we disagree with that. When you actually look at the uh, mathematics, uh, what you've got is a mess in the mathematics. And people who are dealing with Einstein's relativity, they're not all going by the same sort of maths. So when they're saying that, that's not true. It's not true at all. There is conflict in what these people who believe in Einstein will say about the maths. If you put an atomic clock on an aeroplane and you send it around the world, will that clock actually run slower than a um, the clock runs slower, but that, that in no way really proves what Einstein's supposed to be talking about. Einstein uh, is, seems to be claiming that that's time that's been affected and what many of us distance point out, no, it's the clock that's been affected. If the clock's been affected and it's ticking slower, that doesn't mean that time's been affected. Time is sort of like an abstract concept. And really, this is why you need things uh, better to explain by Einstein, where you could debate things. Is it, Does he really mean uh, the clock is running slower, or does he mean that time is running slower? There's lots of ambiguities on this issue. This is, this is just maths again, so uh, the derivation of the maths for Einstein doesn't make any sense. And if they're sort of like messing around with the maths, then you can put it into a form which would probably be useful. But in the form that Einstein has the maths, it is rather messed up. The equations may be in use, but the actual equations are what are called Lorentz transformations, and they come from mine from Lorentz. So, Lorentz actually had the mass before Einstein, and it's the context of which those equations are being used. If you are using the Lorentz transformations in the context of Lorentz theory, then from my point of view, it makes quite a bit of sense, a bit more sense. But if you go and buy Einstein's 1905 paper on his theory of relativity and he's using those Lorentz transformations and it's not quite making much sense hence hence why we're disputing it so much and it does attract attention from a Nazi party. it's attracted attention by the Nazis unfortunately in the 1920 uh, the Nazi party is starting up So, as per what he was saying, after World War One, 
the German people were looking for a reason why, why they lost that war and it was a case of finding somebody to blame and the Nazi party decided to blame Jewish people for the, for the blame for, for, decided to blame the Jewish people for losing World War I and with Einstein being Jewish he attracted then the attention of people like this representation of like Nazi person who he had his bat Nazi badge and he's now approached this physicist Leonard So no, so he's blaming it on the Jew, at being Jewish physics. So it, it seems to be from this uh, uh, meat debate that uh, Leonard had started off just criticising Einstein's physics, and then he got diverted on to uh, criticising Einstein for being Jewish and blaming it as Jewish physics, and then being roped into the Nazi party. That's sort of like the swastika there supposed to be a nasty person so so it gets the diverted onto that but this is the representation of the mid debate I don't really know if it's accurate but the way it's been portrayed here uh, Leonard is not becoming a nasty until after the debate before the debate he was attacking Einstein just for the physics So that's just criticising the Einstein's theories, but then it's uh, moving over, criticising the theory, Einstein's theories, to moving on to attacking Einstein for being Jewish. So that's how horrible it turns out. Uh, first of all, it's on the issue of physics, and then it gets moved over to attacking Einstein on a personal level because he's Jewish. It's quite awful, horrible. But that's the way it's being represented, as I say. We don't really know what happened in this debate. Um, so first of all, Einstein did debate with people who were opposed to his relativity theories at Bad Noheim, 1920, unfortunately generating, degenerated into Nazi racist attacks against Einstein, and Einstein did not seem to want that sort of debate again. So because of that whole mess, we end up with not a proper de having no proper debate with Einstein, uh, just based on criticising his relativity and no resolution to clarify what he meant on lots of issues. Um, and now I go to this uh, paper. There we go, reactionaries. This is a bit more accurate than, uh, than that represent drama representation, I hope. He says here, two important and unpleasant events occurred in, in Albert Einstein's life in 1920. That August, an anti-relativity rally was held in the large auditorium of the Berlin Philharmonic and a few weeks later, Einstein was drawn into a tense and highly publicised debate with Philip Leonard on the merits of relativity at a meeting in Bad Nauheim, Germany. I review these events and discuss how they affected Einstein in light of new documentary evidence that has become available through the publication of Volume 10 of the Collected Papers of Albert Einstein. And so 
the anti-relativity uh, rally. It's sort of like the, there was uh, being whipped up people who were opposed to the relativity of Einstein. So here we go. Just one year earlier, Einstein had been celebrated as a Newton of his age. So this is in 1920 now. In 1919, he's the overturned Newton. As the greatest scientific triumph, the confirmation of his prediction based upon his general theory of relativity that light could be bent by gravitational field of the sun. This observation by the British Solar Eclipse Expedition under Arthur S. Eddington had caught the imagination of the public through extensive coverage by newspapers around the world instantly propelling Einstein to international fame. And as I point out, that's really not sufficient evidence to overturn Newton. Uh, really things should have been looked at in more detail before making such a dramatic claim like that. And if I go to the other ones that one look at <coughs> Professor Roger Ryden he's uh, he's looked into general relativity in a lot more detail and it doesn't really make sense so this claim that Einstein's general relativity is confirmed in 1919 doesn't really hold up <coughs> The huge public acclaim and adulation that was accorded Einstein, a Democrat, pacifist and Jew, upset the reactionary circles of the Weimar Republic. So he upset a lot of people. And one of the things that upset people was he was a pacifist. And so that meant he wasn't supporting the German uh, war effort, so he wasn't viewed as being patriotic. So that was really no, really one of the big reasons for uh, having that backlash against him. So they look at him, he's a pacifist, he's, he's not patriotic, and, he, and then they say, oh, he's a Jew. So they then sort of like tying the two things together, and it's very unpleasant. It also vets conservative academics, notably the Nobel laureate Philip Lenoff. That's the person who pointed out to you, who's criticising Einstein just now in the TV programme. You may have felt that theoretical physicists Einstein had captured too much of the limelight, while other experimental physicists such as himself were not appreciated enough. Einstein experienced the harsh consequences of his newly acquired worldwide fame in the summer of 1920. In August, in the large auditorium of the Berlin Philharmonic, which had a capacity of 1,600 people, a series of lectures of states that denounced him as a fraud and a propagandist. And in September, at a meeting of the Society of German Scientists and Physicians in Bad Norheim, Germany, he became embroiled in an intense debate with Leonard on the merits of his theory of relativity. And so he's going to, the person writing this article is going to review that. we go down. So you can read the rest of it if you're interested. Just going to point out a few things. So the anti-Einstein rally at the Berlin Philharmonic was widely covered, sometimes provocatively, in the Berlin press. On August 27, Einstein responded indignantly to Wyland's campaign in the aforementioned article in the Berliner Tagblatt. Wyland is another person criticising him. Directing his sharp pen not only against Wyland, but also against Greek Gurek. How he spoke that, and Leonard, that was the one we've been shown. 
uh, the word, cir word circulated immediately that Einstein wanted to leave Berlin and Germany. So it was so bad that Einstein uh, was uh, wanting to leave. So. So, in his Ant Hort, uh, Einstein challenged his opponents to debate in Bad Norheim, so he set it up. In fact, months before the anti-relativity campaign had gotten under underway at the Berlin Philharmonic, Einstein had proposed to hold a general discussion on relativity at the Bad Norheim uh, meeting in lieu of giving a lecture there. Now, however, following the events in Berlin, everyone, including Germany's eager, eager, eager journalist expected a sensational Einstein debate. Some five to six hundred people steamed down to Ward Bad Norheim uh, Bath House Number Eight to attend the debate. Seating was limited. Okay. After a sort of uh, four hour wait, so I say, saying for the debate, then thus began the famous duel or cot fight between Einstein and Leonard. Unfortunately, no one, unfortunately, no known complete account of their debate exists. So we don't really know what happened in the debate, hence why that representation in the TV programme, I don't really know how it is. The physiclic Siegfried published a careful rendering of the arguments they exchanged, except for a hiatus halfway through it. Herman Weir published the other official account of the meeting for its co sponsor, the German Mathematical Society, but his account of the debate is coloured by his reworking of its arguments and therefore is not a little transcription of it. So um, he's a uh, fan of Einstein, so of course he's writing an account which is favourable to Einstein. Other participants offered their recollections later in life, but these are inconsistent and differ on matters of fact as reported in contemporary newspapers. So they've got different accounts of what was discussed in the debate. In any case, the various accounts made clear that the most important point raised by Leonard was his contention that Einstein needed fictitious gravitational fields to ensure... This is Leonard there. Uh, his prin the principle of his... Uh, the validity of his principle of equivalence. Leonard exemplified uh, this issue with the case of a breaking train and it might be related to what we've just seen. If, according to the principle of equivalence, the slowing down of a moving train is equivalent to the effect of some gravitational field, then what mass has generated this field? Einstein replied that the gravitational field responsible for slowing the train down is perfectly valid solution of the field equations for a certain configuration of distant masses, that is, for an appropriate set of boundary conditions. Leonard responded that this just explained away a valid concern by a purely formal argument. He believed that relativity violated the intuitive understanding of physicists principally because it dismissed the ether. So this is uh, one of the big issues about Einstein dis dismissing the ether. And if I go back to uh, this, nope, that doesn't work. Let's go. Go back to this. Uh, do you need me? Uh, always. Oh, nice no, one. What? 
I'm back. Back. This is my little talk video here. Einstein's confusion over the ether is one of the issues that needs clarifying. Einstein, over the his years, kept changing his mind about the ether. So it's one of the things that needs clarifying. What what is Einstein's uh, final position? What the ether is. One minute he seems to dismiss it, and the next minute he brings it back. So, when Leonard is criticising Einstein on the ether, that's one of the things that needs to be clarified. What is Einstein's position on the ether? Einstein then pointed out that the intuitions of physicists had changed over time. That's not really helpful at all. So Einstein, Leonard is claiming he he believed that the relativity violated the intuitive understanding of physicists, principally because it dismissed the ether. And Einstein's point, response to that is Einstein then pointed out the intuitions of physicists changed over time. And that's most unhelpful. And there must, if there's not any more than that, then that's just an unhelpful reply from Einstein. Some newspaper reports emphasised that the arguments were exchanged in an entirely objective fashion. One report even believed that an exemplary uh, calm had prevailed during the debate. Nevertheless, depensions had been mounting. So, it's sort of, uh, if we read on fire, they find out after the debate, people get really upset by things. If I can find it. So after the conference, both Leonard and Einstein left the conference deeply distressed. Uh, Leonard renounced his membership in the DPG and even denied admit admittance to his office at the University of Heidelberg to any of his members. And this is he that he now claimed that Einstein had a close connection to Moscow and that he tried to intimidate opponents of relativity with threatening letters. So that his personal attacks now are being levelled. Um, Leonard's presumably leaving the debate upset that people were still wanting to believe Einstein's relativity and then he's thought of then going towards becoming a Nazi. If he didn't if he wasn't a Nazi before the debate he sort of strong leanings to it's the debate that's pushed him over to become one. And Einstein, well he's gone through a very bad experience. Leonard's antagonism towards Einstein grew even stronger until in Nazi Germany it found its place in this racist ideology of Deutsch physics, of German physics. Einstein on his part deeply resented Leonard, uh, believing that he and also Wilhelm Fein uh, had only been making trouble out of love for trouble. I will not allow myself to be made so upset again as I was in Nauheim. I absolutely cannot understand that because of bad company I could lose myself in such a deep humorous success. So he had such a bad experience in the debate that he didn't want to have any more debates like that. And that's the situation we're in. There's never been a proper debate with Einstein with those people who are criticising his relativity. Uh, without that sort of thing, there is never a proper way of resolving uh, the issue of clarifying what exactly did Einstein mean. It's another contribution to why there's a mess. So I'll point out that one again. One of the issues that needs clarifying is over what is Einstein's position on the ether. Einstein changes his mind and it's not really that clear what is his, supposed to be his final position on the ether. 
there's lots of issues like that sort of like preferred frame or gravitational field uh, and so forth there's just lots of things that need clarifying and with Einstein not wanting to address the criticism of uh, his relativity with the opponents of uh, his relativity it's just left a lot of things unclear of what Einstein was supposed to be talking about hence why we get in a mess cuckoo process though Einstein, what Einstein seems to do is doesn't make any sense hence why it needs clarifying so you can read Einstein you can read Einstein and it doesn't make any sense as to what he's talking about and so I'm saying saying Einstein is talking nonsense is a valid, valid conclusion you're just reading them and it doesn't make any sense so it should be accepted as a valid conclusion that Einstein is talking nonsense he didn't clarify uh, what his opponents on, on the physics side of things wanted to bring up he didn't clarify it at all there wasn't this just left it in a mess as to what it's supposed to be dealing with so the physics side got messed up because of all this unpleasantness with the Nazis Einstein didn't want to get into more, any more anti-semitic debate, anti-semite debates You could, they couldn't stick to just the physics and it just spilled over into racism all very unpleasant thank you